Illinois, we have an executive session tonight at 6 o'clock for personnel issues. Uh, next is department reports. Uh, code enforcement. Good evening, everyone. Uh, for the month of October, we performed 29 inspections. Three more houses were identified for condemnation. Ten permits were issued. One house was boarded up. Three stop work orders were issued. Uh, six properties had their violations corrected by the owners. Um, the demolition contract by Petters Company is coming to a close. And we are preparing to schedule condemnation areas for 32 structures beginning of next year. Uh, oh, and one other thing, uh, we're going to present a new fee schedule. I think at the work session in the middle of the month. Okay. So uh, for all permits. Subdivision fees, things like that. Okay. Any questions for Chris? Yeah, um, can you tell us about stock work? Uh, sure. What, what does that mean? <clears throat> it means you started without a permit or you're doing something incorrectly? Oh, I see. Okay. So that makes sense. I love the late looking <laughs> it's, it's a red sign for your door. Because what do we ever want to stop work? <laughs> sometimes. I'd be surprised. Anything else? Yeah, I just want to. Say feeling about love though, it's nice to see that that house was taken out and it cleaned everything up fine. Yeah. Uh, next engineer, Joe. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yeah, the uh, written report, um, the pump station project, uh, I think I mentioned a meeting or two ago, we did file for extension with DEP. They acknowledged that they did receive it uh, <coughs> and it's under review. Verbally, they told us it's not going to be an issue. Everything's still moving along and um, on pace with their with their new schedule. So um, the I'll just hit the highlights here: the Stony Brook slab remediation done, um, Jack Town Road bridge work is scheduled to start next week. Um, the the submittals that we've received have been reviewed. There may be some other ones that come in here and there, but so most of that's um, ready to roll. So work will start next week. The paving, um, to my understanding, um, there are some items on two of the roads that there's an issue with. Um, we're aware of it. Um, we're dealing with the road to make sure that it's taken care of. Um, so we just got to kind of, obviously, over the next couple weeks, work through that. Um, I don't believe that we've paid them everything, so we'll hold the money back. Um, so we'll get it resolved. Um, so, but we do know that there's an issue there. It's more of um, the Patent Hollow CCTV is done. Um, we have the videos in house and they're under review. Um, so once we get a chance to look at that, um, our office will issue a report for the next and we prepare recommendations. Um, the garage roof, I was talking to um, Paul actually before the meeting. Um, work is probably about 90% done. Um, there's just still a little bit of should be done. Um, if it's not done, it should be done here within the next couple of days. I think it's probably pretending there's one structure I think it's still left. Um, and the uh, blighted demolition with um, prep crew demolition, um, we've been in communication with them and they plan on starting this month. <coughs> Is that kind of thing? Could that be done? It's not. I don't think 
thin prints right over there. So um, we go across the Jacktown Bridge that's going to be replaced. Yeah. There's a up around the Bend area. That's where these slides have occurred. There's about six, eight houses up there. I talked to a couple of the residents, and well, I mean, I mosey up there look every once in a while, and they said they'd be more than willing to go up their front yards so that that road could be pulled away from that cliff. And is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As long as they give us, as long as they give us the information, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Ye
it's in something up to like 350 grand. Yeah. At least they were saying for each project. Yeah. Okay. That helps. Yeah, that would be awesome. Go out, we're told, hey, go 
lot of people look at it, you put your geotech out there, now all of a sudden, kind of, the commissioner that was spearheaded maybe doesn't get reelected, and all of a sudden then it becomes a back burner issue. And then it sits for a while, and then whether it gets worse, you know, then all of a sudden something new comes off, we gotta get this open, right? So it's been like kind of a, to be honest with you, and Greg and I are talking about this, it's been start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. So if you guys tell us collectively, let's roll with this and get it fixed, I mean, I mean, we'll, like we tell everything else, I mean, Jack Brown wrote it, it's like it's a bridge, we can get it done, we got it done. It's just, it's been, I think what's happened, you correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, if we've looked at it in the past, give a cost estimate, and it's like, whoa, 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 you know, that's too much, we gotta figure out something, and all of a sudden it just kind of like dies. Um, I mean, we can look, you know, it's my, I, to be honest with you, I haven't been up there and physically walked it. Um, but my guys have been out there and told me, you know, there's there's more than just one slide. I think there's multiple, correct? Well, so yeah, I was actually getting ready to ask if you've ever been there. There, there are a couple areas, yeah. I mean, 100%, I agree. Um, I grew up in White Oak, and um, I, we had a similar, totally different situation. But they, they cut the road down. And that, where I grew up, there was a stop sign. We had one lane, you know? And there was a major, major much bigger than, than that hill. Um, but, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to determine whether the light could be put in, or it, I would like, can you, I mean, I don't know if I can ask you to personally go look at it. It, it was definitely underwhelming, you know, when, to, to think that um, this has been one of the, I talked to Greg about this, one of the major issues since he's become manager, and it didn't, I'm, I'm not an issue, I don't want to pretend to. Uh, I'm just asking the questions because I think that it should be a priority to get that right over. Yeah, I mean, if it's, it is, but no, also, also um, you know, there was conversations about how much it costs you to open. I have to think that um, some of the numbers thrown out there are excessive. You know? Well, it, that's that's exactly where it, it doesn't show up, Josh. Now, the problem there is to fix this. It's built over a coal seam. You cannot put anything over coal. <laughs> so the biggest cost of this project is actually that removal of that coal. If they could just dump it over the hill on console property, it'd be different. But there's, it's just crazy how much they have to remove and then backfill to fix that road. And I think there's the other thing too that I think drives the cost is there's, it's my understanding, like I said, I mean, a bunch of our engineers and I have something like that. Like I said, I have it personally. It's my understanding too that there's big time drainage issues there too. So it's not like you could just put a light in there can solve the problem. I mean, at any time what's going to happen is springtime comes, we're going to get big rains or you get, you know, freeze thaw, you know, that we get here in the, you know, in the springtime. Anytime there's a massive amount of water like we get around, it's going to just keep getting worse. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you may, you, you may be able to, and like I said, I'm, I'm just going from, I haven't been out there looking at it, but seeing similar type of situations. It may be, yeah, you could throw a light out there and we get one rainstorm and the whole thing's out the window, you know? Yeah. So I think it's just, uh, there's an ongoing issue with the, um, whatever's going on subsurface and it's, and it's exacerbated by the fact that there's no drainage. Yeah. And Paul, would, would you like to drive a uh, plow truck along that road? No way. I mean, we gotta get it done. You know, we have, we have to get it done. I mean, one of the things, and maybe, this, you know, maybe it's more of a workshop kind of thing, but one of the things that Greg and I talked about a couple months ago is if, it, you know, if that and Jack now become a priority, it may be something where you need to go and borrow the money. Because, I mean, it's it's not like it's a, my understanding is they're not like they're $100,000 fixed projects. I mean, they're, they're especially in the state. I'm not going to throw a number out there, but it's not like, put it this way, Jeff, it's not like Greg has it sitting in general, probably, we can go out to the contract and fix it. I, I guess the only thing I'll, I'll say is, um, if you, if a resident in Smithville needs emergency services, the only way would be to go outside of the county or to go through the trail. And through the trail, they have to unlock and lock gates, I think, multiple times throughout, down, down, down the trail. I cannot imagine that's quick. And right now, I drove that road, and um, I'm just, I have the opinion that it can be driven, maybe not even by residents, but by, by emergency personnel or somebody. It, it do, doesn't, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm frustrated by it, but it, it, it's, I do.
get it. And um, safety is number one. Um, when you say drainage, um, um, what, what, what drainage issue? Um, drainage caused by the slide? No, the water was there. No, no place the question out of and I'm, I'm just asking because I kind of like I get it when you're talking. Paul, you've been working, you've worked with Township for a long, long time. Yes. Is that road the number one? I mean, have, have you driven that road when it was open? Yeah. Is drainage a major issue up there? It has it been? Uh, it's the water that's coming up the hill. There is three or four springs along there. Is that the only road in the township where there's springs? No. Is there other roads comparable in terms of springs on the side of this? Uh, there's, around here, it's, there's springs. And that's one of our things that we look for is with the uh, under drain and stuff when we repair our roads. I, I think that if there was other access to the town that I wouldn't think was a big deal, but I think considering the facts on the paper, I just think it's really important. And again, even if we have bridges for police and chemists or something, you know, maybe could that be a You guys want us to look at opening opening it, the ways to open it temporarily. I'm more than happy to Can you look at that? 100 percent Oh, that's something. I don't think it could with that. I don't I mean I, I can't speak for the point. It, it, it's about to start snowing. I asked that question of Paul for a very specific reason. Paul, we can want to put one of your guys on that road to plow it if it was temporarily open. <laughs> oh, have you been down the road at all? Yeah. Okay, recently? I, I was there. I've again. walked into it. I've been, I've been there several times. Uh, first part of August, when uh, McAdil was doing some, uh, we got some best holes for it. Okay. That to look at. That's, I was up there. It was in August. Gotcha. Great. Great. Say something. Say something. Yep. So, Jill, and after, <coughs> after conversations with some of the commissioners, I think of them. Experience, you know, three years as a manager. I think you're right about us wavering on the decision, uh, you know, the board wavering on the decision. That's very true. I think what KLA should do to help us is let's talk about Jack now, right? So there's different options. We can reconnect it to Mill Hill, we can cut any yards, we can fix the slides, keep the width as it is without cutting any. This is what we have to spend. Then I know I got a budget. Like I don't, I'm not gonna because I think I've I've been down this road, not here, but I've been down this road before. And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, you can tell a client we can fix this for five hundred grand. And they're like, what are, you, what are we gonna come up five hundred thousand bucks? So you know, you tell me. I mean, what what's your problem? I, I think I think they agree they have to fix it, mm -hmm. but there's almost too many options out there. We're not, you know, uh, Jesse did some geo, he did some samples, and I guess we need to look at those closer. Like how stable, you talk about the pool scene, how stable is that, uh, especially on Forest Hills, especially. Um, also, you know, when I was, I'll, I'll be honest with you, when I was with the uh, Allegheny Conservation District grant managers or whatever, they're on these low oil roads all the time. They looked at some of the Jacktown, the, the very recent smaller slides, and they thought we could fix some of it internally. Mm -hmm. But they didn't tell me how because they're not engineers, so is that a possibility? <clears throat> so but we need guidance. Yeah. So I think we just need to pinpoint it more. More than we have. Like what is the most viable? And the, the only, there's not a lot of people looking at it. And when I'm there with your engineers, they're not always strongly suggesting something. They're kind of looking at it, assessing it, they're taking it back to the office mm -hmm. and that's kind of where we're at. And the, 
the only thing, Greg, and uh, I don't want to speak for you, if I say this incorrectly, please correct me. You were with multiple members of the Dirt Grab and Little Boy group. Right? They came up next. Yeah, three of them. Three. Well, two of them were there. And one of the things that they said was, it's not that bad. Forest Hills? Correct. Yeah, they didn't think it was that bad. They, but they, I don't know what that means. They said to Greg, they, 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 in terms of what they look at on a regular basis, it's not that bad. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is it. But yeah, this is the one of the biggest, this is the thorn in our side for the township, you know. Yeah, I don't know if I didn't really ask why they thought that it was possible. Can I ask a dumb question? Yes. <coughs> who, who closed it? I wasn't around. Right? And I, I mean, was it a campaign recommendation that we said close the road? I, I don't know if that was us. I, I'm just asking. Like, I don't, like, I don't know. Right? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know who deemed it to be unsafe. Closed. That's the thing. I don't, so it goes back here. So why was it closed? I don't. I mean, if it's kind of passable, like well, who decided? Okay, we're closing. I, I don't know. Do you have a frame? What kind of did some? Yeah. That's yeah. something you said before about you know you want a price range for us. I mean, let us know what the most economical price would be, and then we'll have to figure out do we have the money? Do we have to borrow the money? Do we have to raise taxes? We'll figure out how. We just need to know yeah. what it's going to cost. And again, what can Paul's group fix? You know, they can do it, that's, that's the most economical. So if you can get back with us on that. I, I want to go back to that interesting question you just asked. Hey, Paul. So as I remember, when I first got on the board, that road was closed for a different slide that was then repaired on the other end. On the, um, <clears throat> yeah, there was a slide on the left. So we had a, we had a slide on the... Douglas Run side, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then we had the current one that's blocking it, which is towards Smithville, but yeah. all the way down the hill. Yeah. And then there's another couple slides down the hill below that one. Yeah. And then there's a couple other slides on the Douglas Run side of this. There's yeah. multiple things that have happened here. Yeah. I don't remember who closed that. I, I that would have been the township. It would have had to have been. Yeah, had, let's, let's kind of wrap this up. Yeah. We have to yeah. take the workshop again. And the, the only thing, I mean, I, I think our position should be not not to tell you how much we want to spend, but like we want the very best price available. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, let's move on, please. <clears throat> I will try to stay short. Just uh, two things. Aside from my monthly report, um, I see Chief Pascas here from our Southeast Regional EMS team. Um, you know, everything I have to talk about outside my report today is just reminding the residents here in attendance, um, and we happen to have anybody here from the media, uh, just how. <clears throat> how grateful we are as a community to have regional uh, emergency services that are just so efficient. Um, I was able to attend with uh, President Poyer the uh, EMS fifth anniversary uh, last Saturday. And uh, from that, I awarded uh, Lieutenant Bober um, a, a meritorious service award on behalf of the Elizabeth Township Police. Um, her actions in May of 2022, when we had the plane crash off of Skillet Hill, uh, just remarkable leadership in a chaotic moment uh, that ultimately resulted in uh, somebody still being with us here today from uh, her emergency medical uh, guidance and leadership on that scene. And then the second thing, just because I'm sure a lot of people were talking about it on social media, today around 2 p.m., uh, Elizabeth Township Police was dispatched to an active uh, brush fire uh, in the area of the Mount Vernon ball field. Um, when we arrived on scene, uh, Sergeant Deppin and Sergeant Simba and uh, Jace Bonovich, who's one of our uh, road employees uh, actively got involved in, you know, fighting the fire, uh, got a hose from an adjacent ball field uh, concession stand and, and, and began to, you know, damp down the fire so it didn't spread to our resident locations on uh, Middlesex and Terrytown. Uh, very uh, courageous actions by, by our team. And then again, just saying like our regional fire departments, everybody who doesn't know, you know, when you see a fireman standing in the with a 
food and collecting money and stuff. These are men and women who are out there on a volunteer basis, and uh, we rely on them heavily to uh, protect our families in these moments of peril. So I'm very grateful to have these multiple fire departments in our region and work with them every day on accidents and these fire incidents. And I just want to remind everybody just how fortunate we are as a community to have them, and, and we enjoy working with them. Uh, from the fire, I, I can report that we have identified two juvenile males um, and charges <coughs> are pending. Um, I don't want to get too more in the weeds of public comment for that. But again, great work by uh, the Lumen Township Police team, and uh, they've been working hard since 2 p.m. to go on scene, collecting evidence, interviewing uh, witnesses, and just, again, very grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Sure. Any questions for Steve? <laughs> just, uh, I want to thank everybody, too. As uh, EFY Vice President of that, of that area, that park, uh, the amount of effort that went into to these individuals to save something for our youth and our community was unbelievable. Um, just to see them try to camp uh, out an uncontrollable fire with a guard hose over a gas line while they're trying to do it, at no, and just to save somebody's house and uh, and the families around there. And to me, the, it, it was an amazing sight to see. So seeing everybody come collectively. Yeah, we lost about three to five acres of underbrush and trees today. So by no means a small brush fire, but it was all set up. Mm -hmm. um, tremendous effort by our fire teams. In, in, in addition to Chief Onyx, Sergeant Simba, Officer Devin, and uh, Jason Bonovich, there was also a resident, Ron Fine, who was among the first on the scene. He was, from what I understand, participating and helping, yes. helping out. I wanted to mention it, man. Thank you all. Uh, Paul Hogwarts. Yeah, other than uh, <coughs> my written report, um, Slayer and I were in the middle of a leaf pickup, so and it's just unbelievable the amount of leaves out here today over the weekend. Uh, we do have the leaf bin out here on the parking lot, and that's just for leaves only.
good news in the budget that's on schedule for advertising and for the uh, We are in the middle of three audits. We just were in the middle of a liquid fuels audit, a PMRS pension audit, and a bond audit. Uh, we finished the liquid fuels one, and others will go on that. We're still in the process of the other two. Um, Nick Algeri has completed the robotics scanning data, so we'll start. He has a couple more routes to redo it because of the angle of the camera. But he'll have, we'll have that data in a couple of weeks after we finish those last couple of routes. And then we can start to analyze it as far as our next year's road program. Uh, we have two grants, uh, final contracts have been sent. That's the LED light conversion and then the recycling containers. So I have contacted the appropriate vendors for those two grants to get those started. So we'll, uh, I'll just keep you posted on that over the next couple of months. I, did, I think I mentioned I did attend the grant workshop down in the borough. It was the borough with uh, Pima and FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers and a lot, lots of local municipal leaders. And the idea was for us to all get together and share our concerns and our knowledge um, on flood mitigation, which we're all collecting quite a bit. The borough more than us, but we definitely have our fair share. Uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great get together. Uh, from that, I submitted a letter of interest for a watershed, uh, a letter of interest for a grant to do a watershed study on behalf of all of the area, starting at Fox Run, including everything around that, uh, Stony Brook, all that stuff that dumps into the hollow and heads down that creek, because I think that's by far our most flood prone area. And the letter of interest got accepted, and I accepted to fill out the grant application. So, Great. Uh, I have Great. to determine the amount so that's good news. Um, I've talked about some of the other grants. We've got a lot of grant stuff going on. Uh, that's really the only thing I wanted to mention that just kind of uh, coattail off of what Mr. Mowry said was we just finished 10 demos with vetters. So I think we're almost finished with those. We have four to come with Rec and Crew, and then we've got approved for six more, and the asbestos certifications are in process. And that's a total of 20. some communities that were not uh, accustomed to contributing. 
So um, in, in respect to that parity, uh, we met with all nine communities. This was probably about three years ago, right prior to COVID. I was here with, uh, with the board at that time. And uh, we decided to ask for funding based on population served. Um, it seems to make the most sense. Population drives our calls, just like things such as nursing homes do, or major throughways. But uh, at the end of the day, the call volume is definitely driven by how many residents uh, you serve and protect in a community. Uh, so we put the action plan together. We met with all the communities in a way that COVID hit us, and it just put the brakes on. Uh, the communities had no idea what it was going to do to their uh, revenue sources with uh, real estate collections. Um, our call volume plummeted at the same time, uh, but now we're revisiting that. Uh, we um, hired a nationally known uh, firm of Page, Work, and Wolfberg uh, to do the EMS contract, which they've got thousands of. Um, with that, we asked for a five-year contract with each municipality, uh, $8.50 per head. That amount, uh, for Elizabeth Township purposes, is uh, Eight fifty, part of which goes towards the utility costs to maintain the building at 911 Swiss Plan. The total amount funded, it was our goal to uh, share the cost of one ambulance crew among nine communities. And obviously we need a lot more than one ambulance crew, but the rest of those uh, crews can be funded by our program service revenue. Um, along with that, it, it was recognized that there really isn't any expectations in writing so with your contract, along with another contract that, uh, that uh, Matt and I worked with the township on, uh, there's accountability for EMS to you. There's accountability for that 24-hour station being maintained at 911 Swiss Way. There's accountability for that being 24 hours of advanced life support. Um, there's also accountability for us to provide records, any records, uh, give you a voting seat on the board of directors by one of you, city commissioners. Uh, or someone that you elect to have. Um, our finances, and we just want to be completely transparent with all the communities because at the end of the day, we're about uh, as close to an authority as you can be operated by because the vast members of those voting people are commissioners, council persons, or mayors, elected officials. So um, I uh, had sent that over and I was just here this evening um, to address any questions or concerns that you may have uh, pertaining. Doug, do you want to let commissioners know too about what the basic amount for that amount? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. So, yeah, so the base amount would be your resting population times the 850. Then, right off the bat, would be your annual full fuel allotment that you're giving us currently, which would be deducted off. And then, on top of that, there was an agreement between us and the township. We could not afford Swiss Way when we first marched, um, just due to liquidity uh, issues. So the township helped us satisfy the remainder of the debt. We have placed that asset goes directly to the township in the event that Southeast Regional uh, ceases to operate. So it's your asset at that point in time. Um, but also we agreed that we would take 10% uh, a year for five years, I believe it was, of, of that forwarded transaction money that you gave us also. So it would be whatever the top number, let's just say it was 100,000 minus, 40,000 if you'll minus 10% off of the top would be your allocation. Anybody have any questions for Doug? Any of those good questions? No, thank you. No, thank you. Really appreciate you coming out tonight. No, absolutely. And I, I do want to just take one more second for the chief here to tell you I cannot uh, express um, how powerful that presentation was that he gave Corey. Um, she had not been a lieutenant with us all that long. Uh, she recently moved into the township here in Elizabeth. Um, you guys have a great asset with her, and I know that uh, she was very surprised and humbled by that. Thank you, Chief. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is public <clears throat> comments. Um,
yes. conversations we've had. Well, I said there was a hole in the, in the liner. There was a hole and the liner. Couldn't afford to replace it. There'd be a huge no. bad so if you were asked that. a question, at least allow him to yeah. answer. So, so when we talked around the group when, in terms of the last meeting, we talked yes. about when we pulled up the liner, the smell. Um, the, the company that sells the liner and the skate ring said that it's not conducive to this environment in winter. It could be a few many nights that are, you know, days that are too warm. And that's the problem is it melts and cools, it melts and cools. And that's when the kids come, that's what rips it. So when we were here the last time, we thought maybe we would check with some of the fire departments possibly, the recreation team might, but we were saying that no. I thought if I looked around, this wasn't the place we really wanted it anymore. Nope. Yeah. But why? This is the place that's most visible. It's by the police station. There's never been a problem with any of the children's skating. Not that there's been a problem with children, it's just not conducive to this environment. Right. The Easter egg hunt, that was one of the reasons it was given to me, because the grass was not right. That's what okay. I just said. We have a recreation right. center. We have a hundred places for people to park for an Easter egg hunt. Mm -hmm. The grass always grows back under the skating ring. It's the one place that we have for the children here. My child is gone from here. I'm not doing this for my child. For the other children, they're here in Elizabeth Township. This 30, isn't fair. Out of 13,000 residents, when you, you're the only one that's coming forward saying we want this. If you want me to bring a group of people with me, I will. But I thought if I came by myself one on one, that people would hear me. I mean, does anybody else have any comments on this? Nobody else cares if there's a nice game. Nobody has children. I'm the only one in Elizabeth Township. <coughs> Okay, so you're not going to do it. That's what I can tell the table. We're not going to do it because no one else cares but Claire. No, you can say we're not going to do it because it's not conducive to the weather here, and that causes. But we have it here. We have it here for how many years, and it's stayed on it. The problem is it rips, and the problem is in the springtime, Paul can tell you, it smells. Um, I mean, there's just it's just not something that's that's really conducive to, to this Elizabeth Township area here. If it was a cool one, but possibly, yeah, it was just, it's not something that we're looking to do. I'm so very disappointed. I know. That's number one. Okay. Number two is my driveway. So we look back through the old commissioner's notes going back, you know, enough years, and there's nothing in there that we could find that states that Elizabeth Township's responsible to pave your driveway. And we did trust because they we looked back through. They voted on it and approved it. No, we did not. We look back. Search through all the old minutes. Well, it is not there. We went back if you we think it's there, Claire, go find it and show us. We went back four years, Claire. It's even further than four well, years. That's what we it's went over back. eight years ago. It's over eight years. We go back four years. Um, it's over four so years. So we passed over eight years ago and you never acted on it. Now it's just. Why would we pave your driveway eight years ago? You didn't pave my driveway eight years ago. You're so familiar with the situation. I'm very familiar with it. Are you?
it's got lots of sort of blind, a couple of blind turns on it. And um, as you probably might know, when Olympus is drilling, they have water trucks, they have sand trucks, they have um, drill rigs, they have tractor trailers, they have triaxles. And they all use Douglas Run, that's their haul route. And um, because I commute on Douglas Run, um, I uh, became afraid um, this last time. Before that, it wasn't so bad. This last time, it's, it was bad. Trucks are driving too fast. They don't stop at the Nichols Hill stop sign. They cross the center line all the time. Um, there were no flaggers there frequently. Um, and the trucks often start up Nichols Hill and they can't, the sand trucks in particular, can't get up Nichols Hill, so they stop when they're halfway up and then they, they kind of roll backwards. So this caused me to feel unsafe. There's also a lot of traffic on Douglas Run and everybody drives too fast on it. Um, lots of people can get on Douglas Run. It's a true way there. So that's the bad news. The good news is, and this is my task, um, when the um, police cruisers arrived down there with their lights on, things drastically improved. Everybody slowed down, people didn't cross the center line, the trucks got up the hill, the flaggers were there every time. Um, so what I'm asking is that the next time Olympus is drilling, the next time Olympus is doing anything, that you just put those police cruisers down there. I'm sure it costs a lot of money. I don't know who pays for it, I hope the township doesn't, but it really makes it much, much safer down there for everybody. So Catherine, just you say, well, um, so what happened was, was, was about a month, month and a half ago, she came out where they, this was happening. So we got a large complaint from the resident. Um, so it's a raccoonist, uh, she was on the clock right away. Um, we worked a deal with Olympus where they actually paid for our officers to work, you know, the details to, you know, help. And I think if you notice after that it got better, and yeah. going forward, is that, that's going to be in place going forward. Yeah, uh, right. The solicitor spearheaded a uh, workshop meeting with the uh, team from Olympus, and uh, they agreed to uh, put the flaggers in place 24 7. And then they also agreed additionally to two police officers. And then outside of that, so there was never an assumption that we were in a partnership. Remember, we're oversight. Uh, right. we're no, we, have, we have no benefit to anybody but the safety of the community. Yeah. Uh, I, we're part of the uh, South Hills Area Council of Governments. So we uh, mobilized the South Hill Area Council of Governments on top of the regular rotation. We did three separate uh, motor carrier safety inspection uh, locations there. And uh, I, I don't have the statistics in front of me, so we had, we had trucks taken out of service, we had trucks fined, and it was kind of triggered after the solicitor made me aware of a, of a traffic accident that occurred at Douglas Run and Long Hollow. Right. And uh, we, we got involved right away, we took that truck out of service, we filed charges, uh, traffic charges nonetheless. Yeah. And uh, it, was a, it was a good, all, all these all these people up here worked well with getting yeah. something in place and ensuring that it was uh, not a team effort with Olympus, but an oversight of Olympus to make sure that the roads were in fact, you know, able to be traveled on safely with the use of construction vehicles coming in and out. Yeah. Well, I just wanted, wanted to reinforce that ahead of time because I know there's gonna be more drilling, there's gonna be more construction, who knows what, and I really think it's important to have those officers there. I couldn't agree with that. Also too, um, I just wanted to point out that the Public Works Department, I, we, we, I talked with him a lot too, and he put all new speed limit signs on there that were accurately at the right distances, and we also put a lot of uh, active turning and stuff, so that way if uh, the police department can sit there and ticket, because there's actually, uh, you know, you have to have the right signage and the right amount of distance and stuff like that, and uh, Paul and the uh, Public Works team worked very quickly on that. I think they got that done in like a week, you know, which yeah. any, any type of government thing done in a week, that's, that's amazing. They did a lot of work to make sure that we brought safety to that area. Yeah, I know it changed very quickly, and I, I really appreciate that. I just wanted that to happen in the future. Yeah, that's basically Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next is uh, resolution. Uh, motion to adopt resolution 2022-13, amending the annual criteria for annual earned income credit eligibility 
under the Act 172 Volunteer Service Credit Program, this resolution changes the criteria for Elizabeth Township Volunteer Firefighters to the eligible for Act 172 Permit <coughs> Income Credit. Can I get a motion? So the second. Any discussion? I just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware that might be that I believe that this was adjusting was the two year service. Uh, well, the the hours, that, that's the yeah, starting year one.
Next, motion to accept letters of interest to the Commissioner appointment of Ward 5 for the term ending December 31st, 2023. Letters of interest must be received by the Township by end of business on Friday, November 18th, 2022. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Next, motion to approve the Sean and Eva Brennan lot consolidation at 611 West Newton Road is approved by the Planning Commission. This consolidation creates one parcel from the two existing parcels. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion to approve the door of lot consolidation at 316 Terrytown Drive is approved by the Planning Commission. This consolidation creates one parcel from two existing parcels. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any comments or questions? Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Next is expenditure items. Motion to approve the Township Bill Warrant dated November 7th, 2022 in the amount of $787,905.89. Can I get a motion? <coughs> Second. 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 Uh, great. We'll call vote. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Walk? Yes. Mr. Camp? Yes. Mr. Wall? Yes. Mr. Toma? Yes. President Porter? Yes. Next is motion to approve the sanitary bill warrant dated November 7, 2022, in the amount of $1,702,788.24. Uh, <coughs> this includes payments for sewer revenue bond 2019A. $385,011.25, sewer revenue bond 2019B, $305,900, and sewer revenue bond 2012, $702,492.50. $702, Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. All those, or roll call vote? Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Kansas? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Blair? Yes. Next is motion to approve bond requisition number 16 for the series of 2019B bonds in the amount of $34,684.25. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campos? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Boyer? Yes. Next is motion to appoint Russell Urbanic to the Elizabeth Township Zoning Hearing Board for the term ending. December 31st, 2022. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campos? Yes. Commissioner Wall? Yes. Commissioner Tom? I'll be abstaining. President Boyer? Yes. Next is motion to hire Tom <coughs> Methvin as the Elizabeth Township Public Works Supervisor and an annual salary of $70,000 with a three year contract, including a one year probationary period and the full benefit package. Can I get a motion? Seven. Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. Next is motion to approve the 2023 sanitary pension minimum municipal obligation in the amount of zero dollar. Can I get a motion? Seven. Second. Second. It's our third. Um, it's our third pension. Uh, it's our third pension that's, that we know about the fund. Um, I have some sort of a motion as you know, to contribute. Okay. It's fully funded. It's just it's just a formality. Right. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Watts. Yes. Commissioner Campus. Yes. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Toma. Yes. President Boyer. Yes. Next is motion to designate Friday, December 2nd, 2022, as Elizabeth Township Light of Light the Night. The event will begin at 6 p.m. at the Elizabeth Township Municipal Building. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Kane? Yes. Commissioner Watts? Yes. Commissioner Campos? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Tama? Yes. President Porter? Yes. Next is motion to approve pay application number two from Insight Pipe Contracting LLC in the amount of $83,086 
This payment is for the days of camera and cleaning work at Happy Hollow. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments? Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Tomlin? Yes. President Floyer? Yes. Next is motion to advertise the 2023 general fund budget and 2023 sanitation budget. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call vote. I just want to let the public know that budget will be posted on the website and also advertised in the paper to review. Okay. So, review those and bring comments back. Thank you. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Campus? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Tomlin? Yes. President Floyer? Yes. Okay, next is motion to ratify the vote from October 13, 2022 to purchase two additional televisions for the board chambers at a cost of $2,395.98. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. And then those two extra TVs are gonna go up here for the public to see. Can we know when that will be? I'm sorry. Can we know when that will be? When they're installing them. <laughs> not, not at this point. How soon do you think? I mean, what are we waiting for? Yes. Mr. Tama? Yes. President Floyer? Yes. Next is motion to authorize a one time adjustment credit in the amount of $65 for sewage bill ETS 1006322. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Tama? Yes. President Floyer? Yes. Next is motion to authorize parcel 1269-C-302 to pay 2022 township real estate tax at the discounted rate. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campbell? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Floyer? Yes. Next is motion to purchase fifty dollars giant eagle gift cards for all township employees for Thanksgiving as done in the past year. Can I get a motion? Send it. Second. Uh, can I get a roll call vote? A little bit of discussion. I just want everybody to realize that even though we are sort of employees, we don't get a fifty dollar gift card. Yeah. <laughs> Good comment. Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. Mr. Tom? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. Uh, number 13 is a pool. Uh, number 14, motion to authorize one stop vinyl shop to apply window tinting for the front windows of the municipal building at a cost of $5,292. Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Mr. Walk? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. Mr. Tom? Yes. President Floyer. Yes. Uh, next is motion to approve pay application number one from A. Liberoni Incorporated in the amount of $359,443.59. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, discussion. So, John, Josh asked you before about um, this has to do with the hubby board. So, we have enough money still to pay them. We have enough help back. Any other discussion on this one? Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Watt? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. <coughs> Next is motion to approve the purchase of an outdoor LED sign for the Elizabeth Township Municipal Building from Stewart Signs at a cost of $25,015 pending Elizabeth Township Planning Commission approval. This sign will be replaced the existing sign. Can I get a motion? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. So discussion. Um, Chris, does this include the base also? Um, no, it does not. Okay, so this is 25,000. So is this going to go on top of the current sign? No, it'll go. We'll have a, the bottom structure. Uh, Craig can talk more about what he's so already getting. Do we have a price on that? We do not. We talked to one contractor who got this sign. Okay. It's a proposal. 
Google was a X by X odds of uh, still a stone finish to kind of match the building. Uh, you know, more organic style. And he, all I know is he talked to dealer about the house. That's all we know. Because then we have to get it in the full trust. That's what we have to do. See, that's it's worth 25 plus 11, it's about 36,000. Correct. Okay. Any discussion on this? Uh, yeah, the, the only thing is, is um, wait, when is the zoning hearing? Has that been advertised yet? Planning. You're planning, planning, I'm sorry. It's planning or zoning? It's not a zoning. It's not a zoning. It doesn't need to go to zoning. Okay, I just, okay. Okay. Like I said, it's not a Okay, all right, thank you. Yes. Commissioner Tom? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. Uh, next is motion to apply $124,330.84 for the 2022 municipal pension state aid allocation for Elizabeth Township to pension account 02-11-4P. This is the police pension. Could I get a uh, motion? Submit. I get a second? I get any discussion? A quick comment. Just an explanation. This is the state. Uh, state aid allocation that we get from the state. So it's already predetermined where it goes. So the allocation isn't random, it's already determined between the police and the non Roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Tomlin? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. Next is motion to apply $72,526.33 of the 2022 Municipal Pension State Aid Allocation for Elizabeth Township to the pension account 02-111-4N. This is non-unit for pension. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Campus? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Toma? Yes. President Floyd? Yes. Next is a motion to appoint James Lesnowski to the Elizabeth Borough Municipal Authority Board of Directors effective November 7, 2022. Can I get a motion? So moved. A second. Any discussion on this? Yeah, what is this? So, um, Elizabeth Borough Municipal Authority is made up of uh, five members from fight by their bylaws. It's made up of five members from their community and two are appointed by Elizabeth Township. Uh, Jim has served on this board uh, since 2005, 2006, and he's my confidant on this. This tournament just recently went out. I would highly suggest you to be grateful to him. The comment would be I think the effective date would be retroactive back to January 1. Usually those appointments run December to January, so I think it would be effective January 1st. Do you want me to redo my motion? Whoever made the motion itself can actually just do an amendment to that motion. Okay, I did. I'd like to amend this motion to uh, make this retroactive to January 1 of 22. Uh, and Greg, I actually do need a letter to take down there. If you would uh, make that a priority to email that to them tomorrow morning because we have a board of directors meeting and it's an important vote. I need his vote on there. And uh, also a written letter in addition to that for his jacket down there. Yes. Mr. Campus? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. Mr. Walls? Yes. 